What if I told you that the universe never even began and that the universe will never ever end? I'm paraphrasing here, but this is the main idea of a new hypothesis by Sir Roger Penrose, who just won the Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery that black hole formation is a robust prediction of the general theory of relativity. If I may quote, in this article, I outline a new cosmological proposal, conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC, according which the universe undergoes repeated cycles of expansion that I refer to as aeons, each starting from its own Big Bang and finally coming to a stage of accelerated expansion which continues indefinitely, which would be for an infinite time, according to how a clock made of physical material would measure time, in close accordance which, with current observations of our own aeon. There is no stage of contraction to a quote-unquote big crunch in this model. Instead, each aeon of the universe in a sense forgets how big it is, both at its Big Bang and in its very remote future, when it comes physically identical with the Big Bang of the next aeon. Despite there being an infinite scale change involved on passing from one aeon to the next. What we until now believe to be true, and what you have been probably taught in high school and even college, might not be the full truth. The most accepted hypothesis in, by scientists in the field of cosmology is the inflation hypothesis by Alan Guth. It is an extension of the Big Bang theory that tries to explain the immense expansion in the very first 10 to the negative 32 seconds of the existence of the universe. At t minus 10 to the negative 36, our universe began according to the Big Bang theory, which has been pretty much proven to be correct. In the first nanoseconds, the universe expanded by a factor of 10 to the 26. After that, the normal expansion as we know it continued. We can calculate the speed of the so-called inflation, the initial expansion, and it is many times faster than the speed of causality. But this is actually conformed with relativity, as relativity only describes the speed limit for light propagating in space-time and not the expansion of space-time itself. But honestly, to me that always had felt like cheating. I never really liked and accepted the hypothesis of inflation. It seemed odd. This is why I was so allured by Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology hypothesis. It is beautiful and elegant and does not retain from the complexity of deep time, infinity, and logic above the capability of comprehension of the human mind. The hypothesis of CCC can be beautifully described with some elegant mathematics, which is where CCC gets its name from. But you don't have to understand any of it to grasp the beauty of CCC. As far as we can tell, in the beginning of the universe, all energy was crammed into one indefinitely dense point in space-time. The lyric press likes to leverage the term singularity, but you ought to be careful with that term. The point in space-time is infinite in size. And this is exactly what bugged me about inflation. It doesn't seem like what we expect the universe to behave like. To me, it wasn't any more than random equations that were put into place to make sense of the initial first rapid expansion and our flawed human expectation that there must be a beginning, and at the same time being conform with the law, the second law of thermodynamics. Asking what was for, asking what was before the Big Bang was being answered with a hush. One other thing that we can be pretty sure about is the inevitable heat death of the universe. And contrary to intuition, heat death describes the quote-unquote freezing of the universe. As it expands more and more, it gets colder and colder, which would be congruent with previous observations and expectations. If we know one thing about the universe, it's the second law of thermodynamics. And the heat death of the universe bears a paradox, which is actually known as the heat death paradox. According to the second law, Lord Kelvin formulated a reductio ad absurdum argument to prove that the universe cannot be eternal, as if assuming that would be the case, we would have reached thermal equilibrium by now, which is obviously not the case. And therefore the universe must be finite and eventually reach thermal equilibrium. Or does it? You see, paradoxes are intriguing, but I don't like using them as arguments to prove the opposite to be true. It does make sense, I don't argue otherwise, but again, it seems odd. What do we know about the state of the universe in its initial state before the Big Bang? To be precise, 10 to the negative 37 seconds. Now the universe must have been very hot, and I mean really hot. And according to Planck's curve, the black body curve, the universe must have been in a state of thermal equilibrium, which seems paradoxical, 
as we just explored, we should only reach thermal equilibrium in the future. Or in other words, maximum randomness. So how can we explain this very special and clearly defined state of the universe? Let's put a bookmark here, we will return in a bit and for now go the other way, forward in time so to speak. If we imagine a very distant remote future, a future where all mass except for supermassive black holes has dissipated into photons, even those remaining black holes will eventually disappear. It might take a long time, but according to Stephen Hawking and the Hawking radiation, even those supermassive black holes will eventually evaporate and go off with a pop. At this point, there's nothing, no mass, only photons. And photons have a very special relationship with time, you know? Or should I rather say, they don't. According to Einstein, photons do not experience time. You could say they don't know time. And that might sound outrageous, but only to a human mind. And if there is no time, and if there is nothing in the universe that is a function of time, then there is no time. The universe by definition is eternal at this point. And I really like this quote from Roger Penrose. Well, who's there to be bored? Not us, you see. The only things that are around will be these photons and things, and it's pretty hard to bore a photon. <laughs> a photon doesn't experience any passage of time. We can also describe it in physics. If we consider the two most famous equations, Planck's law equals h nu and Einstein's e equals mc squared, we know that without any mass in the universe, the universe has no way of measuring time. And if we can't build a clock, it obviously doesn't know how big it is. As Roger Penrose phrases it, it has forgotten how big it is, because it has no clock. If we compare these two very special and clearly defined states of our universe, we see an astonishing similarity. Penrose argues that the initial expansion we see in the beginning of our universe was the expansion of infinite iterations that took place in the remote future. Think about that for a second. What caused our Big Bang was the expansion of the universe to a point where it lost track of time, where all mass deprived into photons, big was the same as small, and in that particular state of the universe, it is identical to the Big Bang. Penrose calls each iteration an aeon. By definition, the second law of thermodynamics is not violated. It is conform with relativity, black body radiation, the CMB, and most importantly, the cosmological constant lambda, which describes the exponentially accelerating expansion of the universe. As far as the universe can tell, it is constantly expanding. And it allows to ask us the question, and it allows to ask the question, what was before the Big Bang? In our aeon. People often ask if I can understand infinity, if infinity does make sense to me, if infinity is real. I claim that infinity is the only thing that we can grasp. We do not in any way understand finite properties. Can you imagine a universe that, can you imagine that the universe, or better our aeon, existed 13.7 billion years before you were born and before that there was nothing? It doesn't make sense. So when Sir Roger Penrose says that the Big Bang has no cause and that the universe is not finite but in fact infinite, I think he's right. I will leave you with some links to some awesome interviews with Roger Penrose a link to his paper about conformal cyclic cosmology and an idea. What were the implications if this hypothesis turned out indeed to be correct? There actually exists a way of proving it, measuring the traces of previous aeons, measuring the gravitational waves of spinning black holes from the previous aeon. These gravitational waves would accumulate at the border of infinity in a conformal universe and persist into each of the following aeons. We just don't have the technology yet to measure those gravitational waves. In a sense, it would be like encoding the footprints of the previous iteration. Right now we can, with experiments like LIGO, measure our current gravitational waves of spinning black holes in our current aeon. But the gravitational waves from previous aeons were very subtle and it would need some more improvements to our current technology. And if the previous iteration was just an aeon of our current universe, of the same universe, was there life as well? Was there intelligence and were there humans? 
Let me know in the comments what you think about that or better reach out to me on Patreon and I might make another video about or commenting on your opinions about CCC.